Namaste all. Hope you're doing well. This afternoon's practice is a 45 minute half a flow practice. So this is your intermediate practice. As always, feel free to play around, but no pressure, no force. Always working within your comfortable limits. We'll be beginning this practice as we've been getting the last few practices with the Kapalabhati. So that intentional exhale out through the nose. Also remembering that it's more of an action that's focused around the belly. That intentional exhale, you draw in the belly and the inhale is passive. So completely focusing on your exhale. No pressure to be experienced around the eyes, around the forehead, around the chest. If this appears as a suggestion, you're going a little too hard. Relax the face completely. Relax the shoulders entirely also. We'll just be going for three short rounds at a really slow and steady pace. If you're familiar, you can go at a higher pace. If you're new to the practice, the shorter pace is what I'll encourage you to start with. Be in any meditative position where you can sit tall and lift your spine. Choosing an appropriate mudra that you find is helpful. Eyes closed and the mouth closed. We'll just take a moment to settle, to arrive. And effort to really draw your awareness into your practice. Just take a moment to know how the physical body feels. Any areas of holding or tension. Making a similar inquiry into the condition of the mind. With this presence of mind, we'll softly bring our awareness to our breath. And know that you're welcome to witness your breath and just to remain witnessing. But if all is well, we'll mentally prepare for a few rounds of Kapalabhati, the intentional exhale out through the nose, the passive inhale. Completely relax around the face, around the shoulders and the neck. Once you're ready, begin. notice what's the response note the natural pause of the breath once the breath begins to return to normal mentally prepare for the second round once you're ready begin Notice the response, perhaps the pause and the breath without trying to create it. Breath begins to turn, return to normal. Mentally prepare for your third and final round. No pressure or force. Once you're ready, begin. Just notice the response, perhaps a pause in the breath. And 
Namaskar and Mudra, palm to the palms, the press in front of the chest. As you take a moment, set an intention, Sankalpa, or dedication to prayer practice. Release your hands. Chin drops towards your chest. Two gentle blinks, opening up the eyes. Namaste. And softly come to stand. Whichever way is best for you, there's no rush. Take your time to come up. I will work towards the front of the mat. Come to Tadasana, about a foot's distance or so from the front of the mat. Feet together, toes and knees to touch. Take a moment to really ground yourself and to share that weight evenly in all four directions. Hands to the sides of the body. Gaze is front, chin. Set a little back. Sternum if necessary, set a little back also. Begin to breathe that conscious breath and now through the nose. Mentally preparing for a few rounds of your sorry Namaskara. No pressure or force, breath to movement as best you can. Namaskara asana. Palms and lightly press in front of the chest. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, Urdhva Bahasta, the raised arms in line with the ear. Keep the sternum back. A mild bend in the knee, tuck the pelvic from there. Slight back bend. Your exhale, palms to face front. Keep the sternum a little drawn back. As you bend at the knee, hip a little back. Feel a mark front. Hands either side of the feet, release the head. Inhale the right leg back, quite a good distance. Ground the knee on top of the toes, gaze front. Exhale, tuck the toes, lift the knee. Left knee right, the way pad. Maintain the breath up, breath out of comfortable knees. Elbows close, thighs, belly, chest, the forehead, roll the shoulder, then slightly tuck the hips without disturbing the hands. Your next inhale, gaze front, shift front a little first. Then raise the head to chest, shoulders rolled and tuck the toe. Exhale, tuck the toes. Bend the knee, hip up and back. Feet maintained together, good distance between the hands. Bend the knees a little as you inhale, right foot all the way in front. One smooth step, helping hand if necessary. Ground the left knee, on top the toes, gaze front. Exhale, tuck the toes. Left knee right, falling deeply. Good bend in the knee, extend the arm in line with the ear, inhale, feel more work all the way up, keep a little bend in the knee, slight back bending, exhale, Tadasana, Namaskarasana, inhale, exhale, inhale, Urdhva, extend it well, bend the knee, slight back bend, exhale, Tadasana, smoothly fold front. Inhale the left leg, good distance, ground the knee on top of the toes. Exhale the way para. Maintain the red out, Sashtangasana. Inhale, Bhujangasana. Exhale, Bhudrasana. Inhale the left, whichever variation is necessary, take a time, ground the right knee on top of the toes. Exhale. Falling deeply. Inhale, Urdhva. Slide back, bend, keep the bend in the knee. Exhale, Tadasana. Namaskarasana. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, extend it. Exhale, work from the hip. Inhale, right. Exhale, falling deep. Parahastasana into the Dwey Pada. Maintain the breath out. Sashtangasana. Inhale, Bhujangasana. Exhale, Bhudrasana. Inhale, take the time. Right foot all the way there. Ground the left knee. Exhale, Parahastasana. Fold deeply. Inhale, Urdhva. Firmness in the feet. Exhale. Namaskarasana. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, extend. Exhale, full front. Inhale, left. Exhale, the way far. Maintain the breath up. 
Inhale, exhale, inhale, getting all the way there, exhale, falling deep, inhale, Urjava, exhale, Tadasana, Padang Vasasana. Take the feet to be shoulder distance or wider, toes pointing ahead, hands on the hips, knees a little soft. Take an inhale. Exhale, folding deeply. Work towards parallel. If that's achievable and comfortable, release the hands. Then add the big toes. Palms to face. Next inhale, lift and lengthen. Exhale, work from the hip. Draw the lower belly. Fold deeply and release the head. Put no strain on the neck. A long and steady breath. Each exhale, go a little deeper. Quite often it's easy to be passive as you will. Maintain the forward fold. And here, each exhale, feel it active. Work from the hip. Feel the depth. Feel the response. Beautiful. Next inhale, lift the head slightly. A little gentle concave of the back gaze front. As you exhale, release the hands in front of the feet. Then edge your feet together. Toes and heels come together. All is well here. Keep the fingertips grounded, but leaning back to the point that you can keep the feet firmly grounded. All is well here. Proceed to bend the knee, but only to the point that you can maintain the knee over the ankle. This is good. Hands to the hips, or perhaps extend the arms in line with the ears, without disturbing the lower limbs as best you can through the alignment you just created. Raise the upper body. So you're working with the intention of keeping the knee almost over the ankle and bringing the head up to the point where it's over the knees. If you find this is challenging, hands in the hips. If necessary, you can take the bend of the knees a little further and be as tall as required. Lay the practice into full Utkatasana. Start on this head back. Breathe really well. Next exhale, bring the hands to be in front of the chest. Maintain the alignment of the lower limbs. You want to get twisted to your right. Two variations as you exhale, you can get twisted nice and high. Try to drop the left shoulder down and face the chest towards the right side. Very comfortable. Hook the left upper arm to the outside of the right thigh. Get a little twisted from here. But note the knees. Is your left knee popping in front of the right? Can you keep the knees level so the hips are working more squarely and you're twisting more from the waist? Breathe. Super. Inhale, smooth back to center. Extend the arms into Urkatasana as best you can. Hands on the hips is welcomed. You can straighten the legs as much as you need to. Little practice working towards the edge. Next, exhale, hands in front of the chest. And then get a little twisted to your left. Nice and high. If it feels good, hook the right upper arm out outside of the left thigh. Straight line, elbow to elbow. Breathe really well. Feels good, gaze left. If necessary, gaze down. Don't fight the neck. Super. Inhale smoothly back to center. Maintain hands in front of the chest. Sternum is back. This is good here. Begin to shift your knees towards your toes. So much so that your heels begin to raise. Focus on a point in front of you and proceed to bend at the knee. As best you can, sitting tall on the heels with the heels raised, balancing on the toes. If required, hands come to the sides. They can be touching or floating to help with balance. Very comfortable. Your palms can maintain the press in front of the chest. Elbow to elbow straight line, chin a little back, steady breath. Note where 
you feel? Where's the body's reaction? Beautiful response now on your toes, arch of the feet perhaps. Beautiful, you're feeling steady. Getting a little twisted, first variation is right hand, right hip, the left hand on the thigh. You just get a slight twist to your right. If comfortable, just like your Paribhita Ukatasana, your previous asana, you can hook the left upper arm over the right thigh, palms to press, get a little twisted here, mindful of the balance. Take more engagement through base of pelvis, slight drawing up action, and as a result, below the navel is active also. Super. Inhale, smooth, get back to center, mindful of the balance. This is good. Next exhale, twist to your left. First variation, left hand, left hip, right hand, outside of your thigh. Feels good. Hook it and then twist it. Never fighting for depth. A long and steady breath. If necessary, gaze straight down, no pressure on the neck. Inhale, back to center. Releasing our hands to be a little either side of the feet and a little in front. And this is going to raise the hip up a little and then hop the feet to you about shoulder distance a little less. Just a little wider hip distance apart and spine is lifted. If you need to take rest, you can do so at any moment. You can have the fingertips at either side of the feet and a little front if necessary for balance, as you need to. And as you exhale, you want to bring the right knee across the front of the body, landing almost the front of the left foot. Inhale back. Exhale, left knee across the front of the body, landing in front of the right foot. Inhaling back. If this is coming together with relative ease, hands can be in front on top of the knees. Exhale, the right. Inhale back. Exhale, left. Inhale back. Exhale, right. Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, right, inhale, back, exhale, left, inhale, back, exhale, right, inhale, back, exhale, left, inhale, smoothly back. Take your hands in. Raise the hip up as much as you need to so you can ground your feet and readjust your feet from the lasana, the squat pose. Toes turn out slightly if required. Heels can be raised if it is necessary for you. Feels good, however, as part of your practice. Grab the big toes, just like in Padangustasana a previous moment ago, the forward fold, past the face. And then as you exhale, smoothly release down into your squat. Spine is lifted. Chin is a little back. Your arms are pushing a little bit into the inner knee, but there's no pressure on your knee. Spine is lifted. Steady breath. If this variation of the clasp is challenging for you, the palms can be pressing, or you can have the arms extended out, and it can be lightly pushing into perhaps the inner calf or the inner thigh. Choosing which is appropriate. Spine lifts. Lower belly active. Face is relaxed. Beautiful. All is responding here. All is responding well here, rather. You maintain as you are. And if it feels good, just play with your practice a little further. Remember, you're never fighting. As you inhale, keep the hands where they are, but raise the hip up into a forward fold. As you exhale, Manasana. Don't fight, just play. Inhale, smoothly raise the hip, engage the lower belly, fall in front. Exhale, Malasana. Inhale, raise the hip. Exhale, the lower navel is active. Inhale, no fight in the knee. Exhale. Inhale, raise the hip. Exhale. 
Inhale, smoothly raise the hip. Readjust your feet so they're shoulder distance apart and feet turn back into parallel. And as you exhale, fold deeply in your forward fold. Each exhale, working a little deeper. Beautiful. As you inhale, lift the chest, gaze slightly front. Release the hands feet in front of the feet, fingertips are palms. Keep the feet in the sliding of shoulder distance and walk the feet towards the back of the mat. Good distance between the hands and the feet. Adam Mukha Shonasana, the downward dog, ground the palm. Torso back towards the thighs, and might be leaving with the chest. Keep the sternum a little drawn back. All of the torso works back to you. Breathe. Beautiful. This feels good. Keep the toes where they are. And bring your heels together to make a V-shape between the feet. One smooth step or a few steps. Step the right foot front in between the hands, the centre of the hands. Then bring the right hand to be close to the left on the inside of the right foot. Then proceed to walk your hands further around to the left side. Then pivot on the right heel. So your feet come to parallel and you're facing towards the long edge of your mat. With the whole force. This is good. Heels in line, feet parallel. Bring your hands to be underneath the chest, sternum is lifted, fingertips are if you're comfortable the palms. Take an inhale. On your next exhale, you're going to get a little twisted to your right. If very comfortable, you're extending the right arm up, you're opening up the chest and lightly gaze to the hand, but no strain on the neck. As you inhale, you come back to centre and you grow on the right palm. And as you exhale to your left, but no stress on the neck. Inhale back, exhale to the right. And be there. Breathe really well. Beautiful twist in the waist. Hips maintain square. You can have a bend in the knees if necessary. Feels good extending arm up. No pressure on the neck. Gaze side or down if required. Breathe. Feel. to respond. Beautiful. Inhale smoothly back. Exhale to your left. Any degree is welcome. Each side can be very different so not fighting for equal depth. Note that most of the weight is in the feet. A light proportion of the weight is in the right hand. You're not leaning all the way front and putting pressure on the right hand. Keep the weight more in the feet. Inhale, centre. On the exhale, bring the hands to the hips. Knees a little soft if necessary. Now you can work from hand in the hip position, but if you have no particular strain in the lower back this evening, perhaps we extend the arms front. Bend at the elbow, clasp opposite elbow. Sternum is drawn. Face the pelvic exactly. As you inhale, smoothly raise up. Once you've raised, sternum back. Shoulders are free. As you exhale, fall to the right from the waist. Note that you're falling from the waist, you're keeping the shoulders squaring and the hips squaring, and the sternum back. If this is very challenging for your shoulders and the neck, hands down with the sides of the body. Inhale, raise it up. Sternum back, shoulder blade down the back. As you exhale, fold to your left now. Fold from your waist. Checking in with your feet. Note that there's even weight almost shared between the feet. Feet are parallel. If you feel there's a lot of work coming on your left side, come back up a little. Share more with the right. Work from there. Breathe. smoothly up. If necessary, hands and hips, but off all as well as you exhale, work front. Knees can be bent if you need to. Don't fight. Work towards parallel. 
Release the hands behind you once you're there. Interlace the fingers, roll the shoulder, expand the chest a little. As you exhale, work from the hip. Smoothly work from. The eventual intention is falling to a point where you bring the hand, the head even, the crown of the head in between the lining of the feet, and stretching the arms up and over, working in the direction of the ground. But keep the shoulder rolling up. Keep that even weight in the feet, steadiness in your breath. Each exhale a little deeper. Just like a forward fold at the start of your practice, you're actively folding, not passively hanging up. Inhale, bring the torso back to parallel. Exhale, releasing the hands to the mat in front of you. Left toes in a little, pivot on the right heel, right toes point towards the front edge of your mat and wheel the arms around, either side of the right foot, pivot on the left toes, and the right foot back, the downward facing down. That even weight in the hands, sternum is drawn, length in the spine. Spread the fingers, particularly, particularly your thumbs. Can you engage your palms fully with the mat? All is well here. Please note that you can take rest at any moment. All is well, however. Your feet come together at the centre of the mat. Raise the right foot a little. Can you share even weight in the hands? Left heel is working towards the ground. And if the wall isn't too close behind you, extend the right leg up straight. If necessary, have a bend in the knee. Left heel is working towards the mat, but you're not forcing it there. Don't suddenly jerk through the left knee. Beautiful. Next exhale, bend generously at the right knee. Bring the thigh towards the chest. Turn your gaze towards the right wrist and bring your shoulders over it. Then bring your right knee the outside edge of the right wrist as best you can. Shin eventually is the intention diagonally across the body. Then ground the left knee and scoot the left leg back. Untuck the back toes. The intention here is the right shin diagonally across the body with the heel of the right heel close to the left hip. If this is challenging, heel closer towards the groin or you can even be almost sitting right buttock muscle on the right heel. Don't fight for depth. Have a little look under your left. You want your left outer hip, the knee, and the outer ankle working in a straight line. Squaring the hip front as best you can. We'll walk the hands about two hands distances from from the position they're in, but maintaining a shoulder height apart. Now you can remain here. I know this can be a challenging hip opener. You're not fighting for it. But it follows up. You take the right hand and you tread it underneath the left. You can allow the left elbow to bend. Little by little, you tread through. The eventual intention is bringing the right shoulder to the mat and the right side of the head lightly resting. If your head comes to the mat, there is zero pressure on your neck. Keep a little pressure in the left hand, elbow a little bent. And breathe. Things squaring your hips down. Recognize if your left hip is rolling open. Keep the hips squaring down towards the ground. And the chest twists a little, so twisting waist up. smoothly on treading, drawing the right palm, then walk both hands back to your original position, tuck the left toes with care, raise the knee, then the right, back to meet the left, Adho Mukha Shonasana, your downward facing dog with the feet together, balancing your practice, your right heel works towards the mat as you raise your left leg a little, if it feels good, raise it towards the point, then you can maintain the even weight in the feet and your right heel now working towards the ground. Note that you're not jerking the right knee. You're so if you're working in that direction. Feel and breathe. Beautiful. 
Shoot the legs, seal, bend down and see the left knee dive towards the chest. Shoulders over the wrist, look at your left wrist, left knee outside the left wrist. Shin diagonal across the body to the best of your ability. Ground the right knee and scoosh the right leg back. Eventual tension is left heel almost close to the right hip. Right hip, knee and ankle working in a straight line. Be as you are, little practice, walking the hands about two hands distances front. Feels good, treading the left underneath the right now. To the point where you can ground almost the outside edge of the right of the left shoulder even. And the left side of the head comes to ground, but no force on the neck. Square the hip down. Breathe. your hands back to the original position of the downward dog, tuck the right toes, lift the knee, bend the left back to meet the right, and take the feet back to shoulder distance apart, the full downward dog. Rest when required, don't fight for that. Next inhale, bring your shoulder over your wrist into Dway Pot, the plank pose. Recognize if you're dropping your hip, a lot of pressure in the lower back here. Keep the hip a little up, keep the sternum a little back, and push the heel away. If necessary, ground your knees and build your practice from there. Heel slightly front, chin is in a mild double chin. Super. Coming down whichever way is necessary, if you're familiar, Chaturanga. But don't force, smoothly come down with an exhale. Once grounded on top to toes, feet together, toes and heels to top. Hands going to remain next to the chest. If comfortable, order take the hands behind, interlace the finger and roll the shoulder. Next inhale, base of pelvic body muscle lightly engaged. Smoothly raise the head, raise the chest. Bhujangasana. Feet together. No pressure to be here. Drop the chin if there's any pressure in the neck or the lower back. Super. Exhale. Coming down. Release your hands if you've been if you've bound behind either side of the chest. Take your feet to be around as wide as your shoulders now. You can come back whichever way is necessary. Let the practice as you inhale. Roll the shoulder, raise head and raise the chest. Bhujangasana. Feels good, however. You can raise up a little further with assistance of the hand. Roll the shoulder, lift the chest through. As you exhale, tuck the toes. Bend the knee. Adha Mukha Shwanasana, the downward dog. Really, really well. Gaze a little front, bend in the knee. You can walk front or you can hop front. Choose which is best for you, but don't fight. It's smooth, you come onto your back. A little rolling side to side. Come into rest with the rolling. Keep the bend in the knee, ground the sole of the feet, as wide as your shoulders. Hands over the sides of the body, heels into greet your fingertips, chin in a mild double chin. Push the feet into the mat. Knees are going in the direction of your toes. Inhale, feet are firm. The lower bar for the spine is the first to lift, not the ribs. Then progress up through the middle back. Very comfortably upper back with no strain on the neck. Exhale, releasing down. Inhale, smoothly right in. Exhale, releasing down. Inhale, pressurize the feet smoothly, push the hip. Then be here for a few breaths. But keep the neck nice and steady so your spine remains in line. The firmness in your feet, there's no pressure in your knee, no force in the lower back, and no fight in the neck. 
Stay very active. Lower body is active. Feet are firm. All four directions. Beautiful. Exhale. Roll down. Upper. Middle. Lower. With care. How firm are your feet? Once you're firmly grounded, there's no rush in grounding. One tube right. Keep the left leg where it is. Raise the right leg up and place the right ankle just below the left knee. Can your knee almost be in line with the ankle? Be as you are, but it feels good. Raise the left foot up. The thigh works in towards the chest. This is good here. Your right hand can support the right knee. Left hand can support the right foot. As you exhale, below the navel engage. Raise the head smoothly up towards the right leg. You can be in this class that you're in, but if it feels good, you want the right foot to come into the crease line of the left elbow, cradling around the front, and the same on the right side. Right knee comes in the crease line of the right elbow. Draw the, thigh, the shin a little closer to the chest. Don't fight. Very comfortably extend the left leg up straight. And this feels good. Keep breathing. Smoothly releasing the left leg straight down, but hovered a few inches above the mat. There's no strain in your neck. You're not overreaching with your chin. Keep your chin in a mild double chin, so there's beautiful length in the back of the neck. Feel and breathe. Where do you feel it? No fight in the knee. Super, exhale, breathe bending of the left knee, you can draw it straight in, place the right shin on the left thigh, and smoothly release the clasp around the head and the shoulders, and welcome the left foot back to the mat, welcome the right foot back to the mat, at that hip distance or a little wider, and then the left ankle rests on the right thigh, via here, it feels good, raise the right foot, chest works in towards the thigh, works in towards the chest, right hand on the left foot, left hand on the left knee, Lower belly lightly drawn as you exhale, raise the head towards the shin. Feels good here. Bring the left foot to rest in the crease line of the right elbow. The left arm comes around from the knee side. Shin is lightly drawn back as you inhale, extend the right leg up. As you exhale, smoothly, slowly, feel. Releasing the right leg down. Hovering a few inches above the mat if comfortable, if necessary, ground the front. Little practice here on. No foot in your neck. Feels good, re-bending of the right knee, bring it straight in, release the clasp of the left heel, left ankle rests against the shin, as you inhale, softly ground the head. Keep the right leg up, but release the left, so both legs are up, release from being hooked across. Both knees are directly over your hips, then raise the lower leg up, so 90 degree between the calf muscle and the thigh, below the navel is engaged. Light arch of the lower back is okay, but main awareness of the back of the ribs are grounded. Feels good here, chin a mild double chin. Welcome to the arms also. I'll be here for a few steady breaths, but don't force, don't fight. Lightly engage below the navel, base of pelvic drawn, feeling a mild arch in the lower back perhaps, but the middle back, the back of the ribs is grounded. The chin is in a comfortable position. Exhale, thighs towards the chest, grab the legs, head towards the knee, round the spine. Inhale, release the head. Release the legs. Release and rest in Shavasana. Adjusting the body into a position that's comfortable for you. To a position you feel that the body is held and you can take a few short moments in Shavasana. Coming to the end of the breath. Allowing the body to settle. 
allowing any weight of the body, any worry or tension that holds, that occupies your mind, to be released into the earth. It's all accepted and supported, and never being too much. As you come to the end of your practice, you're endeavouring to be completely effortless. And within this effortless and awareness, within this space where just nothing more required of you, set your attention free to move through the body, to move upon the breath. On the inhale, the breath comes up the front of the body. On the exhale, it descends down the back. And each time it passes towards, body settles deeper. Let's go a little further. And on the next inhale, the breath changes direction. Inhaling up the back and exhaling down the front. And on the next exhale, as the breath begins to descend up front of body, allow your awareness to travel upon the breath as far as the space of the heart. And allow it to enter the space, taking up temporary residence in the space of the heart for a moment. And from the space of the heart, allow the body to remain within the position of deep rest, to softly begin to extend your awareness out from the heart space, out to the very edges of the body. Allowing your awareness to extend beyond the edges of the body, and to diffuse into the room that surrounds and holds you. And as your awareness expands, allow it to begin to transition to more everyday awareness and engagement. This awareness begins to influence your breath into being a little deeper, a little more conscious. It begins to stir the body, stirring through toes and fingers and head and the neck, smoothly going side to side. Feet come lightly together, the right arm extends up and over, left hand to the belly, and fold in the left knee, the right leg is straight. Gently roll to your right side. Once you feel steady, push up to any seated position, eyes closed, spine lifted. Coming to the end of your practice, you settle into one last moment of solitude to note any difference to the beginning of your practice. Join the palms lightly together, rubbing palms. Hands play softly over the eyes. A gentle massage on the eyes, the nose, the cheekbones, the temples. Extend the hands a little distance away from the eyes and gently blink the eyes open, gaze into palms. Namaste. Thank you all so much. I hope you had a good practice. I hope the rest of your day goes well. If the later time of 6pm, playing around with different times, if this kind of works for you better, please do let me know. And if the shorter classes, for instance, this is a 45 minute practice, if that's a little more convenient, you can let me know in the comments below also, it would be greatly appreciated. Look forward to connecting with you in your next practice. Thank you.